ladies and gentlemen, Tim Dorset. Hello. Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, please be seated. Uh, hello. Thank you very much for sticking around to hear an English guy. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, what's really lovely is that I get to do these talks every now and again. And uh, it started off by just trying to let people know about some great stuff about the business I work for. And every time I get to do these talks, I, I realize how much I absolutely love what I do, which is, is kind of lucky. Um, so as has been said, I'm Tim. I am the events producer and I'm head of internal comms, but I can't think of a funny way to say that. So we keep that at the bottom. Um, I've been at Innocent for five years now, and, and I've actually met Sophie Grobel on a flight before. <laughs> for those of you that don't know who that is, it's like the, the top actress uh, in Denmark. Um, and I was obsessed with Danish TV <laughs> for a little while. And so when I turned to the lady I sat next to on the flight and said, oh my God, do you know who that is? She was Danish and went, yes, of course I do. How do you know who that is? Um, so that's not actually that important, it's just a bit more interesting than the other stuff. So, I am in charge of this. So I have to help people work better and go home happier. Yes, it's ridiculous. Um, my parents don't think it's a real job. Uh, <laughs> my girlfriend, who works for the NHS service, certainly doesn't think it's a real, dog, a real job when she's working uh, in a hospital all the time. But this is really what I'm employed to do every day, um, which is, is pretty amazing. Um, and that is my job to feed into what we as a business try to do, which is to make amazing drinks that help people live well and die old. And I think we're pretty brave to put the word die in our purpose as a business. But we've got to be realistic. And we've got to try and make sure that the people that take our drinks can live to the best of their ability while making themselves happy. And so everything that we do individually as teams at Innocent Drinks will feed into this one purpose. And so I'm going to take you through a journey of the kind of things that I think I'm, I'm really proud of to work for this business. Um, and it's mainly because of these three boys here. So this is Adam, Rich, and John, the three founders of Innocent Drinks back in 1999 um, when they set up the drinks company. Uh, this is them uh, 18 years later with a lot more money in the bank. Um, and it's because of these guys. So these guys went to university together and they wanted to have a business. Just those guys all together um, because they were friends. They were friends and they wanted to work well for each other and make a success of each other. Not just for themselves, not just to leave uni and get a great job, work in the city. They all went to Cambridge University, so pretty clever guys. But they, di they didn't want to just do that. They knew they wanted to make a success of who they were and for their friends. And so right from the word go, that idea of making it a great place for people to work is how Innocent have tried to do things and do it their own way. So I'm going to talk you through my top 10 things that make Innocent the best place to work. Um, and if you're ever in the UK, please pop by. So first of all, it's a pretty inspiring place to work. So uh, this here is our, our headquarters. It's based in northwest London at the top of Portobello Road. Um, and it's pretty cool, as you can see from here. We don't have carpets. We have artificial grass on the floor to kind of keep the green theme going along. We don't have benches. Uh, we don't have desks. We have, we have picnic benches where people can go and work. We have lots of breakout areas. We don't have that many meeting rooms because why would you have meeting rooms in places where, where you can hide yourself away? If you don't trust those people around you, who do you trust? We are all there to work for that business to make great drinks. I mean, I, I have no idea how many smoothies we sell a year. I don't know anything about that. I couldn't tell you our turnover. But I know that the job that I do feeds into us making great drinks that help people live well and die old. And so we're a team. Um, we're very aware, similar to what was just being said then, that that is work. So, so you can do your work there, and we will try and make it a great place for you to be. But bugger off home at the end of the day, please. And, and we're not impressed if you're going to take your laptop home and work till midnight, one o'clock in the morning. That doesn't impress us. If you're working that much, you've got too much on and you need to talk to your manager about how much is going on. Learn that we will try and make this space a comfortable, fun, engaging place to be, but when you're out of there, switch off. Be yourself. Go home. Uh, next up, we have open communication, so I touched on it just before, but this is our Monday morning meeting. Every single Monday, for half an hour, the whole company get together for a meeting. And it's not chaired by the CEO or a member of the board, it's chaired by me. And not only that, but our five international offices WebEx into that meeting. So every week, our whole company get together to hear some things about what's going on in the different regions and different areas of the business. We don't hide anything from that meeting. 
If we're going to launch a product, we tell people from the word go that we're going to launch that product because we want to trust those people. Just because IT are never going to care about what smoothie goes on a shelf doesn't mean that they don't deserve to know the next exciting project that we're going for. Uh, another one is this. So on this photo here, one of the people on this photo is our CEO, and one person on this photo is our head of social media. So the lady on the left, that's Helena, and she is head of social media. And if you look at the photo there, the third in from the right, um, that's our CEO, Douglas Lamont, at our Christmas conference. Now, he doesn't always dress like that. Oh, and actually, I should say that that's our whole board, actually, not just the CEO, but that whole group of people dressed up in ballerina outfits is our board. Now, we do that because at our Christmas conferences, it doesn't have to be the CEO that tells us everything. He's not that funny, if I'm honest. He's not that engaging, but you know who's really engaging? It's the girl that looks after our social media. She's hilarious. If we've got some things that we want people to listen to and engage with, why wouldn't we let her talk about it? Why does it have to be a hierarchical sorry, way of giving over information? We don't have to have that. Again, we are all in this business for one thing. I am employed to do innocent some good. I'm not employed just to make it happy. Some girl in finance is not employed just to do the commercial finance. We are all there for innocent. How else can we help and affect that business go forward? So our drinkers, this is probably the most important bit because if people didn't buy the drinks, I wouldn't be here today. So our drinkers um, get in contact with us pretty clearly. So when we set up the business, there was a phone in the corner of the uh, office by Adam Rich and John, and it was called the banana phone. And it was this. This is the exact banana phone that was in that office. And it's, do you know why? It's because when they set up a business that they didn't really know much about, they, they didn't, none of them did fruit tech or drink making at Cambridge University. They all did different things, but they knew that when they set up a business, they want to know how, what, what those issues that crop up are. How are they going to be able to know how to best develop their drinks, best talk to their consumers, if they don't actually know how to deal with that issue? So they put a phone in the corner, and on the back of every single product, they put the telephone number to that phone. That's, they don't want to have to reroute that telephone to another call center in another country that will collate all that information over a couple of months and then send it back every couple of months so that then that person that we messed up that drink for has forgotten that we've messed up or they think, well, they don't care about me. They don't care about the issue that was with that drink. If we mess up on a drink, that's our problem. If someone has gone out of their way to purchase our product at a supermarket, we need to go out of our way if we've messed that up. How dare we think that we're above going out of our way for our consumers? So that is why we handwrite every apology letter. We are sold in 17 different countries, and if they don't give us an email address, we will handwrite a letter, and we'll put a couple of vouchers in there and go, we are so sorry that we put a foot in your smoothie. I mean, that is absolutely out of, you know, a terrible thing to have done. Here's a couple of coupons. Please go out and buy another one, and hopefully that one will be better. Why wouldn't we do that? And do you know what it leads to? It leads to this. This is our wall of love. Okay, so this is everything that has ever been sent in by a consumer. And what's amazing is we have never asked for, see right down the bottom there, we've never said, please send in a photo of your hamster climbing out of a carton. <laughs> Who would write that? But our consumers go out of their way to look on our website and realize that we're a fun business. We've got our telephone number, our email address, and our address on the back of all of our products and on our website. And they go out of their way to tell us how much they love the drink. Our, our drinks aren't magic. You don't take a sip of a drink and go, oh, I'll make a blanket, which is up there. That's not a thing. But what people do is they look at our drinks, they go on our website, they see that we give 10% of all of our profits to charity. They see that one of the charities that we help are Age UK, a charity that looks after trying to get old people warm during winter. And they think, do you know what, I'm going to make them a hot water bottle cover. Isn't that amazing? Our drinkers are going out of their way to tell us they love us, not just the drink that we put on a shelf, but the brand, the business, the company, the employees that we are. And as soon as we lose sight of that, we lose, we lose everything that, that we stand for, and we become like every other business that is just about making money. Um, a great way of keeping in contact with consumers is obviously by social media. So I've already touched on Helena being a very funny lady, but I'm just going to show you two of my favorite bits of social media we've ever had. Um, so we decided to put up something that said night marketing, just in smoothies, okay? So we put that on at about 2 o'clock in the morning and made a bit of a joke that we'd, we'd found a gap in the market that's no one markets at the middle of the night. And so someone wrote back, um, smoothies. So then we wrote back, smoothies. They wrote back, smoothies. <laughs> smoothies. 
Smoothies, 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 smoothies. Smoothies, 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 smoothies. Smoothies, smoothies. Can you see where I'm going with this? Uh, just a conversation back and forth with one consumer. And although it says smoothies quite a lot, <laughs> at no point is that about a drink that we sell. At no point is that two for one at your local supermarket. That is just a conversation with someone that has gone out of their way to talk to us. Why wouldn't we have that conversation with someone? I know it's a bit mental, but it makes sense to us, okay? It's really important that we stay in contact with our consumers on a level that is more than just selling them a drink. Um, here's one of my favorite things of all time. Uh, our brilliant Johnny, who looks after um, a section of our social media, did this. So we made a bit of a joke. Um, they sent us a pun about fruit, and then we wrote, do you know what the secret of comedy is? And they said, no, what's the secret of comedy? And six months later, Johnny replied, timing. <laughs> six months. Are, yeah, I know, I'll tell him you claps, he'll love that. He'll go absolutely crazy. Um, so what's amazing about that is he, put, so he saw that, he connected with a consumer on something that they had a laugh at. He set a reminder in his diary that six months later he was going to reply, timing. That's how you keep in contact with the people that are giving you your jobs. It's going more than just trying to sell a product. It's being more than just like, look how great and, and brilliant we are to the world. It's connecting with them on every other level that they try to. I want them to look at their phone, think about Innocent. That doesn't mean it has to be about a product, really simply. Um, this is a grape in a raspberry. But 150,000 people wanted to show other people. So simple. And that was two people messing around in our kitchen, genuinely. Again, nothing about a smoothie. This, uh, someone was talking to me about this earlier, but this was the fourth floor stapler. And someone had the absolute audacity to move it to the second floor. <laughs> okay? Someone got really angry about this and wrote a comment about, guys, seriously, I put a stapler on every floor so that it, you know, it would stay there. So then someone took it to Boston. <laughs> uh, it then went from Boston to uh, Paris, and then it went scuba diving. So I thought it was pretty cool. And then it made international news online. <laughs> so simple. But again, all I can show you is be more than just a product. Be more than just what you are there to sell. Be a person. Be, a, be an identity. Be a character. Be a brand that connects with people on more than just that level. And that, again, for me, I, all I do is spend money for the innocent. That's all I do. I don't make money, but I know that those bits that I can do that is making other staff feel connected, feel connected to the consumers, really want to make the best drink that's out there, not just the best drink that's making the people live well and die old, they're going to work harder, and we're going to continue being an amazing success. So that's social media. So something that Alex touched on, actually, earlier during his speech was um, that we love to surprise and delight. So not just do we give everyone breakfast, not only do we have a gym, but we like to do the little things. So this was sexy power suit day. Oh, yeah. So we don't often dress like this um, at Innocent, but we had a lovely guy called Tom. Now, Tom is the guy on the far right of the photo as you look at it with the glasses on. Now, Tom had been at Innocent for a very long time. He'd been at Innocent for about 10 years, um, and he was leaving because he's an idiot, um, and he was going to work for the government because he's an even bigger idiot. <laughs> okay? Now, we wanted to ease that transition from working from an amazing fruit and juicy fruit and juice company um, to the government by, I emailed every single person in the business and said, guys, to help Tom come to the terms of the decision that he's made, can we please all wear suits tomorrow? And you know what? Everyone did it. Isn't that amazing? I didn't give them anything. I didn't ask them to do anything. But we as a team were all together. And we thought that was a great thing to do to Tom, who had worked really damn hard for a long time. So we were a bit angry with Rach. Rach is the one wearing the yellow cardigan, because that was a bit too bright. But other than that, you know, how can we get people together? Um, this is my friend Dan. Dan also has left, but um, this was uh, on Valentine's Day, um, and I turned it into the lift of love. Um, for one day, I bought a Barry White album, and I played that uh, for the lift journeys. I put a shaggy rug on the floor. I put rose petals on the floor, played some Barry White music. I got some uh, love heart post-it notes, and I wrote the top five girls I fancied in the office, and I stuck it on the wall, and I left the rest of the post-it notes in there in the pen, and by the end of the day, the wall was covered in everybody's top five people, if you know what I mean. And that was just one day, and it cost me 50 pounds, and all I did was go over to the local supermarket, and I bought all that horrible tat that teenagers buy each other on Valentine's Day, 
Because that's a nice thing. This guy had a horrible day. He was working with a really big supermarket chain, and they are a very terrible word, <laughs> not good to work for. Um, and he went home that day, and he didn't go home and go, oh, for what a horrible day again. I'm working with horrible customers, and it's really hard work. Do you know what he did? He went home to his girlfriend and said, look what Innocent did today for one day. Surprise delight. Give them something to smile for every day, however small it is, however cheap it is. 50 quid would have gone on just five more bottles of wine at the Christmas party. How can I spend that to make every day feel a little bit better? Um, some other versions, uh, Halloween. There's a girl called Lily who still won't talk to me after that one. Um, <laughs> ask someone a qu uh, thought of the week. Do you know what the Smurfs are? You know what the Smurfs are? Yeah? What colour does a Smurf go if they choke? How do you know if it's choking? Uh, thought of the week. Uh, it's so simple. Just do those little things. How do you get people smiling every day? And again, that doesn't have to cost anything. A chalkboard and a, and a chalk pen and a horrible mask I bought from Amazon. Doesn't do anything, but everyone smiles, everyone connects with where they work. Uh, our visitors, our visitors are very important to us, whoever they may be. Um, even burglars in this instance. Um, but we do have people come and pop round to Fruit Towers all the time, which is pretty cool. So um, we have our token dog. We've had um, the guy in the bottom middle is Matt Dawson. He won the Rugby World Cup with England. Um, he popped in. Stephen Fry is a bit of a national treasure in England. He's popped in. And probably, um, our, other than Alex and the team from here that have popped in, the next biggest uh, visitor we've ever had was probably Bill Clinton. He also popped in. The coolest thing about the Clinton Day was it was an innocent event, and he popped in because we gave some money to his charity. But if you can see the people behind him, the Secret Service, they are as stereotypical as the TV shows tell you they are. They, don't, they look at you in the eye for two minutes, and then they are looking at everything else. Um, and, they made me, and they had a meeting with me, and they looked at me and went, are you joking? This is the guy we've got to, OK, um, hello, Tim. I mean, I was walking around in my shorts and my flip-flops going, oh, yeah, you're all right, guys. Have a nice day. Um, but this is, this is our doors are always open. So if you ever are in the UK, please feel free to pop round. Um, I talked to this conference two years ago, and we had several people over the next year come and pop in, and we'd love to see you. Um, the Innocent Foundation, we give 10% of our profits to charity. How many businesses uh, do you know that do that and are really proud of it? And I hope that... You can find businesses that do do that. But we try to work currently with helping the world's hungry. Um, there's loads of stuff on that on our website. But here's some of the figures. We've given over 4.8 million to certain charities. We've helped over 750,000 people. And what's amazing about this is there is one lady that looks after this charity. And she has 24 other helpers at any one time. And they are other people working for Innocent. And so on top of the job they are paid to do, they volunteer for the charity around half a day a week, sometimes a little bit less. But knowing that the three founders set up this business at the very beginning, knowing they wanted to help charity, is a really rewarding thing for us as a business. So four, uh, services to fruit. Um, I know this was one of your favorite last time. Um, but services to fruit are our employee of the month. And what's really important about our, our employee of the month is that it's not just the winner that's announced. It's not the top three. But anybody that has been nominated that month deserves to know that the work that they've done has been recognized. So every month we get up and one of our board members reads out a list of 30, 40, 50 nominations because you deserve to know that that hard work you're putting in is being recognized. Not just the winner, that's not what we're rewarding, not the top three, everybody. And that's really important to know that you can keep going, keep making a difference to other people because you will be recognized. Now what's the best thing about it is when you do win, you have to stand up in front of the whole company. You get either the top hat or the tiara and the sash, as you can see here. Then everybody else in the business gets on their hands and knees and says, we are not worthy. We are not worthy. We are not worthy. Because that's important too. But again, as soon as we get to a business size that we think that that's not important, we are like every other business. That was something that started when we were two years old. Okay? And, as, and now we're 18. We've got 420 members of staff across six countries, seven countries now. As soon as we lose that, we become like everyone else. So 3A, <laughs> we make things that do good. Um, the drinks, there's no additives, there's no preservatives. It really is there to make you live well and die old. They taste amazing, and, that, and sometimes we lose that when you work for a business with a product. You forget about the actual product, but they really taste very good. I have several when I'm not drinking coffee. I definitely have a few smoothies and juices. Uh, this is my friend Abdul, and I did not tell him that I was going to be using this photo in a presentation. Um, so if you could not tell him, that would be great. The other thing that we do good is our big knit. So these are woolly little hats. A few people nodding. Great. So these are little woolly hats that we put on the top of our bottles. And every bottle that we sell with a woolly hat on, we give 
25p of that hat to charity in the UK. And we're really, we're really proud of that. And it, does, it takes a lot of work. But the reason we love it is because of people like this. So this is Ali and Marion. And Ali and Marion knitted 2,222 hats, which is pretty amazing, right? Between them. Now, what was lovely was they live about two hours out of London, but didn't trust, didn't trust the Royal Mail with their hats. So they made their husbands drive them all the way. Um, and their husbands were so embarrassed that they stayed in the car. Um, <laughs> When they came in and we, we wanted to meet them, we wanted to chat to them, someone was in the office that worked for our social media team, and so then that year they went on the side of our bottles and they went as like the heads of the product, which is pretty amazing. Got some amazing news is that actually in Denmark in October, there will be some big knit hats in your stores here. We've reached our, um, the, what, the amount that we wanted already, so we're delighted about that. But please think, if you see that innocent smoothie, you see that little hat, every time that you give money um, to charity, I think it's Oxfam that we're going to be supporting through Denmark here, which is pretty amazing. Two, the big stuff. We partnered the Olympics, so that was cool. Um, I got to go to a couple of the Olympics events because uh, we were the only juice and smoothie at the Olympics. And to go from this in 12 years, uh, we, we started in 2000, to go from a, a drink on a shelf 12 years ago was, was pretty special. Uh, we throw pretty good parties. Um, these are some of the parties. This was when we went to Marbella for our summer party. That was because uh, we had a very good year and the founders um, managed to uh, put in some of their own money to help us. The next year wasn't so good and we went to Luton. Um, <laughs> But we had a great time all together. Um, this was the Luton uh, and France. We were in Austria last year, and this year we have privately hired an island in England to try and get every single member of staff together. And that's really important for us, getting everyone together at one time. Now, the one most important thing that I can say about Innocent, and the reason that I have worked there um, for five years, despite signing a contract to work there for a month when I started, um, is the people. Um, we would rather have a hole than an asshole. OK? Our recruitment policy is that we would rather have 10 people doing 15 people's jobs, but those 10 people being really, really brilliant, innocent employees, with me and the team that I work for, supporting them to be able to work very well, than have 10 innocent, brilliant people and five not so great. OK? That's really how we recruit. We work really hard, and we expect a lot from innocent members of staff. But it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to make sure that our business continues the way that we want it to be and being a happy place. Your CV isn't going to get you a job at Innocent. It's whether you can come in and we think that we can teach you how to do a job. You can teach someone to do a job. You can't teach them not to be an arsehole. And that's really how we see it. So anyone that works for Innocent, not an arsehole, I promise. Um, this is our baby photo wall. So this is one of my favorite things. This is a wall of everyone who works at Innocent as a baby. This is the only place in the whole business that you will see our org chart, okay? You will go into Innocent and you will not know who our founder is, who our CEOs are, who are senior members of staff, because they will be mixed up within that wall. If it's your first day at Innocent, you give me your baby photo and I put it in the middle because I want you to see that you are one of this team. Not, here's the CEO, here's the board of directors, your ACs, your team leaders. We all know that. We all know who the bosses are. You'll meet them pretty soon. Why should they get any preferential treatment and why should their photo be any more prominent than you? If you're not doing your job for our business, everyone is affected. It doesn't matter who you are. So you're just as important as everybody else. Um, and it goes down to this. So again, our purpose to make natural, delicious drinks that help people live well and die old. And we will take over the world with smoothies and juices. All right? Watch out. We're getting there. Okay? Yeah. Woohoo. Okay? Um, and we do it by living our values. And this is something that's been a real thread today with every amazing speaker that you've had up here. But we live by our values in every decision we make. And yes, commercial should be up there. We have to make money. We have to make money to progress. But we have to be other things as well. So natural, entrepreneurial, commercial, and generous. That's really important. And there they are. That's the team. Um, we've got a wonderful um, group from our newly established Danish team with us today. They're at the back. Give them a little wave, guys. Thanks. Um, and we've got a lovely treat for you, and we've bought a load of samples. So as you leave to go home in this beautiful sunny day in Copenhagen, we've got some smoothies outside for you. Um, and that's how we're going to try and stay small as we grow into a massive global business. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.